Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing a basic tutorial on the Sears Perspective Touch Avionics Suite. Now this particular suite is kind of a combination of a bunch of different suites all kind of all into one. And there's a lot of overlap between this and the G3000, plus a couple little things here and there that makes it uh, just a little bit more interesting for us over in the Vision Jet. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. By the way, if you're curious about this uh, airport here, this is uh, North Adams. Uh, this is... Um, a uh, pretty terrifying runway, in my opinion. Now, you can't really see it well here, but trust me, when you're going with a little propeller jockey in the real world, this is uh, nerve-wracking. So anyway, let's get started. So this system basically is a combination of multiple displays, and uh, for those of you familiar with things like the G1000, uh, you pretty much got your work cut out for you. Everything's uh, pretty much set up here. Uh, we basically have our primary flight display, which is going to be giving us all the critical information that we need for the safety of flight. Over on the right side, is going to be, this is your multifunction display. It's going to be giving you a lot of good things here as far as your moving map. It's going to have different kind of modes. It's going to tell you what your engines are doing. Uh, down here we have basically these little selectable kind of displays that allows kind of to alternate between different modes. Uh, the way they have this one actually set up is they kind of use the one on the left here is going to be sort of dedicated to controlling this map. The one in the middle is kind of sort of the utility page and the one on the far right is going to be primarily for communications purposes. And when you think about it that way it works pretty well. Uh, you do have the ability of course to kind of swap these in the real world but um, don't do those things because once you start fitzing around with that I prinky promise you oh man it's freezing. It's like minus 11 today. Um, so if you start fitting around with those, uh, don't be surprised if you get yourself in a situation where you're like, ah. So let's go ahead and start with our primary flight display. Assume I can get my head in a good position. Now this is basically the same exact display you're probably familiar with if you've flown on G1000s. Right here in the middle is a little thing that represents the nose of the aircraft. You can see we're slightly pitch up here. Over here on the left is going to be our airspeed. Our selected airspeed is going to be up here in the top left corner. Our angle of attack indicator are unique. Not all aircraft have one of these. Notice this angle of attack indicator is not in degrees. It's percent of maximum angle of attack. So one of the cool things with this is that when you come into a landing, you can basically pin it there and not even worry about the speed. Over here on our right is going to be our current altitude. You can see this is an, not an AGL, this is an MSL. So right now we're about 660, uh, 655 feet up here. Coming down here, our barometric pressure. We have a radar altitude. You can see we're five feet off the ground. Uh, one of the things that's always tricky about this aircraft is it doesn't look like it's five feet off the ground. But if you try it out in VR, you'd actually be surprised just how uh, high and big this aircraft actually is. So once you uh, go ahead and take to the right to that, you're going to have your vertical speed indicator. Uh, this little needle will move based on uh, when you're going up and down. Down here is everybody's favorite little compass. Uh, this is basically going to tell you what direction you're heading in. Now uh, you can, of course, see your selected heading if you change that. You also have your little kind of CDI and OBS and all that stuff integrated, as well as the two selected options. Down here, you're going to have a couple other pieces of information. Obviously, we're parked, so some of this isn't going to look great. You have our true airspeed, ground speed, our wind information, anything as far as our currently selected waypoint goes. We have information about what bearing we're selecting. We have a timer, and of course, we have the current time. Now, one of the nice things about this particular display is up at the tippy top, you're going to have all your notifications as far as your automatic pilot goes. So, you know, if I were to float down here and, you know, press one of these options, for example, uh, let's go ahead and select a random altitude and press out. If I float my head up here, you'll notice it'll actually indicate that up at the tippy top. And you can see our new selected altitude is now flashing at us. So, obviously, you want to shut that off. We can turn it back on as well. Top right is going to tell us what our currently active communications frequency is. You can see this is kind of the local one, as well as any warnings. Swinging over here onto this side, uh, we have a handy dandy page, which is going to be giving us all the information that we need for our flight. Now, what you probably notice is this has been split into three different pages right now. The left-hand side is going to be providing you with all your information as far as your engines goes. Uh, keep in mind, we have N1, N2, our term ride temperature, your oil temperature, pressure, gallons per hour. Obviously, sitting here on the ground, we're sucking down some gas. One thing you notice is this little R has this kind of distinctive little box around it. That's just letting us know that we're actually using that fuel tank. Yes, a jet engine that has switching fuel tanks on us. <laughs> Curling down here, we have our pitch trim. Uh, you can see right now that we're out of trim, actually. If we were to be taken off, of course, we'd want to go ahead and adjust that so it gets into the correct proper range. Again, this is pitch trim for takeoff, not pitch trim for other options. Landing gear indicators, uh, we have a cabin pressure. Uh, naturally, we have um, about the same pressure we have locally. We haven't really started pressurizing it. Swinging over here to the middle, uh, we have our typical map. And uh, what you're probably going to notice is this map is all over the place. Now, this map looks like what I'm familiar with when I you know, fly a different aircraft. And of course, I have this display here. So now let's go ahead and I'll float down here. And I'm actually going to go back to the home page real fast. And what you're going to notice is you're going to have many, 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 many different options here. Um, usually when I play with this, this is going to be the one that once I have it set up, I kind of forget about it. The one over on the left is generally kind of fitting with it as I go. And the one on the right, of course, if we're changing uh, frequencies or anything along those lines. You come down to the bottom, you're going to notice this is handy dandy utilities page. And you have a couple different things that you can play with here. Go into the setups page, and if you go down to the Avionics settings, this will actually allow you to kind of customize some things that you could use as far as minimum runway distances. You can adjust your 
units here. Again, you can see the variance has already been set up kind of a thing. Uh, we have our MFD fields. And uh, one of the things I like to do with this, again, this is MFD fields. Uh, this is the stuff that you have across the top. Is you can actually come in here and turn these on and off if it bothers you. So like you'll notice right now, the uh, top left one says FOB. That's supposed to be fuel on board. For whatever reason, it's zero, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a minute. And you can also see things like desired track, and you have all your critical options that you can set and actually put up here. You can see our current endurance is 28 hours right now, so I'm really not worried about running out of fuel, even though it says I have no fuel. I don't worry about this, but this is just kind of a nice little thing that you can change for those of you who like to do it. Uh, one thing that I like to do, for example, is I always like to change this one. Uh, if you can just scroll down, you can see all the different stuff. I like estimated time of arrival next estimated time on en route. That's just kind of one of my things, but again, everybody's a little bit different as far as how they like to set this up. Another thing you can do, too, is you can set this to local time which is fantastic so uh, this will show you the actual time of day and like i said once we get moving it'll actually show you what time you're going to get there this is so 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 super helpful um, when you're doing all sorts of different flights and those kind of things like that all right so that's uh, just one little page a lot of people misses this one because it kind of goes all the way it's, you have to go through some menus to get there um, another thing you're going to see on the utilities page now this is kind of a big deal is the initialization page now this particular aircraft actually has the ability to go through the uh, components by the way watch out for le left click white click it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, that's how I say quick. So I'm going to go to database status. It looks pretty good. You can actually import your charts with this, which is a super cool. I don't have this. I find this just a little expensive for navigation data for a flight sim. But again, that's my silly opinion here. Uh, system tests, you can come up here. I love this. Uh, it says ready to execute. You go pre-flight test. Higher, 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 higher. I wonder what's higher. going on with my engines right now. Stall, stall, stall. Now, one of my buddies uh, says that aircraft that talk to you are superior to aircraft that don't talk to you. It's just kind of a fun thing like that. So then we can go down initial fuel. Remember a minute ago how I said uh, we have no fuel on board because we never set it? You can actually dial it in right now. Uh, this one right here is actually measuring the fuel. This one actually is a fuel totalizer. So if I press FOB sync, uh, you'll notice that we actually have fuel on board and it syncs up with the amount of fuel we have. I always like to mash this button right before takeoff. That way, it, you know, whatever it measures is what it's going to go ahead and do. You can also click up here and uh, set it manually. All right, let's go down just a teeny tiny bit. We have weight and balance. I love this. You can actually preset all this. It's, it works pretty well on the back. looks good to me. And then you have flight plan. Now, the flight plan option when you're programming, there's a couple different ways to put a flight plan into the uh, vision here, or the perspective touch, I should say. Uh, one thing we could do, of course, we could mash the direct to button. We could also add this. The important thing you got to remember about flight plan is with flight sim it works better when you actually dial the uh, flight plan into the kind of a flight planner than it does sitting here and punching in the different digits but obviously when we're cruising around we don't always have that luxury so what i'm going to do is add origin uh, like I said, uh, we are in the middle of nowhere right now. This is a lovely uh, North Adams Airport. But let's say that, uh, you know, we can go ahead and press home on that one. Again, I'm not going to worry about it too much. We can now go ahead and dial all those components in. And it's pretty much the same. I'm actually going to hit the nearest airport. That's the one. K-A-Q-W. Ha, 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 ha. Let's go back. That's K-A-Q-W. Like I said, got to remember. Ba, ba, ba. Like I said, just a cute little thing in case you actually forget it. There we go. That looks good to me. And our destination today will be, we'll go down to Hartford, because why not? K-H-F-D. And of course, so we can add an on-route waypoint. Notice it automatically updates everything for us. It gets everything off. We'll go via, let's go via BAF or something like that. And again, just to make it a little interesting for us. BAF, enter. And that should work pretty well. And uh, just like you, for those of you familiar with the G3000, it's exactly the same kind of interface here. You know, if I need to activate the leg, I can click on it and you can come right up here and actually activate it. You can remove waypoints, you can add waypoints. This is all very, very straightforward as far as the flight plan goes. Uh, one of the cool things you can do here is if you go down to flight plan option, you can actually turn it on. And this is a little thing that'll actually appear and show you the actual components of the flight plan directly, which I think is incredibly cool. And it's uh, one of those things that we miss. By the way, watch out for this little full button because what people accidentally do is they go like that. And then all of a sudden like, oh no, what if I, oh, that's not a problem. Yeah, basically all you've done is eliminated that other page here. So going back to our utilities, back to initialization, uh, we have our flight plan entered, hit accept initialization, and now we're good to go. And uh, that's kind of the only really pre-flighty step that you have to worry about this one. Next, of course, what we do is we have a bunch more options up here, and I think it's a kind of important to kind of go through. Well, one thing I like is you have a checklist built right in here. For example, uh, if I want to do uh, before takeoff, if I press that button, it'll actually bring up a page here that'll give me my individual pieces here that I can actually click my way through when I'm actually doing all my checklists and things like that, which I think is, like I said, kind of neat. Um, if this gets in the way, by the way, you can hit full, and that'll, of course, uh, bring in the main map here and expand it so that it gets out of your way directly. We have another page in here for the charts. Uh, again, notice charts data fail. Uh, the reason 
reason for this is, like I said, I don't have the uh, fancy command software subscription to all that stuff. So unfortunately, you're not going to see that. Again, we can go like this. Oh, no, what have I done? Just press the map button. You'll be perfectly fine if you ever get that confused. Notice you can half map, half a map. I, again, I don't know why you would. But one of the advantages, of course, of a half a map like this kind of a thing, I can take my map up here. And you have a couple different options as far as, you know, you want to zoom in or out or something along those lines. But like I said, I never really touched that. Coming from the uh, top left corner here, if you hit the map settings, uh, this is going to bring you a bunch of different options for this map. One of the neat things I like about this one is that you do have NextRad data. Uh, NextRad data is just a fancy term for the weather, but on the right of it, you're probably going to notice that it has the ability to control how far out the NextRad data is actually going to be reading for you. In this case, we're looking at a thousand nautical miles a lot. Another really, really popular option on here is this guy at the tippy top. This is orientation heading up. If you hit that, you can actually change this so it's track up or it's north up if you want to have your page I'll be rotated here. Again, everybody forgets that one, but I find that kind of cool. And of course, you have your map sync too in the event that you need to play with this, as well as your map detail options. If you think there's too much junk on your map, you can actually come up here and simplify it. Personally, I'm a huge fan of about this level. I don't think I really need more than this, but um, if you're just cruising, sometimes you can uh, leave that up, but like, ugh, that's a lot of stuff that you have going on there. You have a little inset window. I notice it's uh, not there. Uh, the reason it's not there is because they have to pop it on to actually turn it on. But look at this. You can actually get yourself all the critical information about your flight right there. Next, coming down, you have your aviation choices. Uh, this allows you to pick what things you're actually going to be showing on that chart. And then because we have that option, of course, going below there, you have your land options. Uh, one of the things I'll probably do is shut most of those off because uh, they kind of get in the way. Uh, states and provinces are kind of fun, but like, again, if you really, really want to go blind here, uh, keep in mind that you probably want to reduce how much of this is going on. Otherwise, it will become very, very challenging to see what you're looking. Of course, down here, uh, one of the nice little things is you can put some quick little things here. I love how you can get a little this one. You also have the range fuel reserve option here, and what you can actually do when you click on this, what it will do is actually project a circle around your aircraft so you know how far you can actually travel. Now the problem is we can't see this because we're down on the ground and we're not moving very fast. So again, a lot of really, really handy things. So I'm going to go up to home. Uh, traffic is a neat little page. Uh, when you hit that one, what that will do is that will give you the traffic indicator, which is uh, super duper handy. Again, I can go over here if I want to change my range. Let's say I want to do a 24 nautical miles. I can just go pop 24. One of the things you can do that works really well is if you slid like that, you can actually activate the map on one side and leave the traffic display on the other side, which is just a really, really kind of handy way to see both of those particular items at the same time. So like I said, really, really, really slick what you can do with this one. To the uh, right of that, of course, you have your weather option. Uh, this has our little weather, weather whoop, try saying that fast, uh, the weather radar, which is going to let us know. If you want to, you can match that button and get a really, really nice look of the upcoming weather that's coming up right now. Obviously, we're on the ground and there is no weather, so there's not going to be a lot to see here. Uh, like I said, you can always go really quickly back by mashing the map key like that. We don't have taws. Oh, don't worry about that. Coming down here, uh, we have our Direct 2 option. This will allow us to pick a particular waypoint. If we click Select Waypoint, we can just dial something in immediately if we wanted to do. You can also come down to the flight plan itself and select a particular waypoint out of that. Like if we wanted to go down to Bath, for example, which is along our route, we could just come in here and dial that in and actually go to that directly rather than trying to kind of integrate it. Unfortunately, these buttons do not work for us, which is kind of a shame because you can have a lot of fun with that as well. To the right of that, of course, we have our flight plan page. Uh, we saw this a little bit earlier. Uh, like I said, one of the big things you got to watch out for, this is where you're going to access your procedures. For example, when we were going into Hartford, uh, let's say we wanted to do an approach. Obviously, Hartford, we don't have a lot of choices for approach. Let's say I want to do the LDA for two. You know, I could come in here. And uh, one of the cool things here is you can actually preview that, which I think is slick because uh, now we have the ability to actually check that. And you can see it's a very, very silly approach, depending on how you want it to do. And here's your whole sequence. And again, we can put it to half mode if you want to kind of look at it on the right. And you want to be able to see it on the left. It's really, really slick how that's all kind of broken in. Um, again, if you ever run into that situation, you're like, oh, God, what happened to my map? Just come up here and press map again, and then I'll snap that right back. The proc button is also duplicated right here for those of you who are looking at it. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at is uh, this option down here called Aircraft Systems. Now, this is cool because this is going to tell our MFD on the right what system options we'd like to actually see. Uh, pressing Status and Info, we'll go ahead and bring up a kind of like sort of like a generic page here. But uh, one of the things I like, at least with this aircraft here, is up in the top right is you're going to see all the kind of crap. <laughs> it is not that cold. Hey, hey let, let me show you something fun. Let me show you something fun here. Uh, let's do live weather. Okay, give that a couple minutes to kick in. It is not 19. <laughs> Anyway, but one of the things you'll see is we get your aircraft weights in here. It'll also provide you things with your takeoff distance. If you're in the air, it'll provide you with your landing distance. Of course, it tells you things like, did you close the door? Is your external power turned on and off? And kind of all those different options are provided for you directly, which makes it a little bit easier for us. 
come down here again, hit engine and fuel. This is gonna tell us all about the engines. Obviously, if you're starting the engines, I always like to come over here and take a peek. It tells you some critical things like how much fuel you burned, what your quantities are with FOB, is my fuel pump on, is the shutoff on? This is a great way to see uh, what you did wrong as far as trying to discover why something is not running as far as your engine goes. Electrical power, obvious. Uh, you can see our battery. We're not even running on battery two right now, but all the central buses are all perfectly fine. Ice protection, uh, naturally we don't have any ice protection turned on at the moment, but it lets you know how much fluid you have remaining. It tells you if you have anything all set up, your windshield wipers, all that's on. Uh, one of those reasons that's super handy is if we're doing a pre-flight, this is a great way to flip something on or off to check to make sure it's actually working. Here's our landing gear. You can see everything's looking good. Uh, like I said, if you're running through your initial stuff, we have the emergency hydraulic pump. Everything's uh, kind of ready to go in that regard. To the right of that, of course, we have the VAMS. Uh, VAMS is uh, unique to this airplane. <laughs> Basically, in this aircraft, it allows you to you know, pick different options and stuff like that. Don't sweat. Utilities we took a look at, uh, speed bugs, uh, basically allows you to turn on and off speed bugs, which are going to be these little guys over here on the left. Now, let's say I'm taking off and I want to know my rotation speed. If I click on that, it'll put a little marker here that'll actually let us know when we hit our rotation. Let's say we also want to go ahead and have our VY speed. Now, we can go ahead and dial that one in, and now we'll have a little Y after the little R to let us know. Now, when you're doing approach speed, you can see everything is uh, dialed in here. And of course, if we ever goof it up, we can always reset everything back to defaults. Waypoint information, uh, pretty straightforward. If I want to pick up a particular the airport. Uh, let's go ahead and say we'll pick on BAF, because why not? Enter. It'll give you all the critical information, like frequencies and stuff. Like, you know, if I wanted to go ahead and, uh, let's see here if I can see this. Ah, uh, ILS is all in there, all those different IO frequencies, 127.1. I can click on that and check this out. You can actually make it an active frequency. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and pop it into standby number two, and you can see it automatically updated down there. Like I said, absolutely fantastic. Be careful with that right click, like I was warning you a little bit a moment ago. We have our nearest option, of course, which allows us to see anything that's close to us. You can see all the different VORs. Uh, if you select them one, let's say I pick a Chester, I can just click on it, boop, and now it's saved to nav one, and that's how fast that is. So now I have that immediately activated. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the PFD controls here. Now the PFD is uh, one of those things that once you set it up, you kind of leave it alone. A couple different things that I like to play with. Uh, the one thing of course, is you have your navigational source, that would be for VOR, VOR2, and of course we have the GPS, which is again, depending on where we're going, that's what we can have. You also have these two bearing options. And the bearing, what they do is they grab whatever VOR you're dialing in, and they'll actually point you to it. So this little blue needle right now is actually pointing towards that Chester VOR we had just selected a minute ago. Now one of the fun things with these is you can actually do a GPS bearing or an ADF bearing, assuming you can even find an ADF left in the world, that's worth checking out there. Go ahead and shuttle those off real fast. Speed bugs is exactly the same as we saw a minute ago. Uh, you have the timers option. One of the fun things with the timers option is you can actually count in both directions. So if you wanted to do something like this, for example, do a 20-minute 20, 20 timer, it's a bit too much. I meant a two-minute timer. There we go, nice. We can now go ahead and count down. And now one of the great things about this is we can leave this kind of interface like that or when you run it, you'll actually notice in the bottom right corner that the timer will start running itself down. So if you're doing certain types of uh, non-precision approaches, for example, you can actually just look over to your right and watch that ticking down rather than kind of looking between your legs and uh, sort of seeing what this is right now. Minimums are exactly what you'd expect. Uh, we have both types of minimums. We have radar as well as better metric. Typically, it's going to be about 200 feet. I can just dial that in right now. And you can see I've already got a minimums warning. And you can also see on our screen that that's actually updated itself directly so that you can see how that works. Traffic map gives you a little half traffic display. Again, remember, this will display your traffic for you as well, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. Go ahead and flip it to full screen there. And that works really well as well. Coming down here, you have the PFD map settings. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you don't want to look at the traffic map, you can go ahead and turn on the world's Team. Look how cute this map is. It's so tiny. Uh, you can go ahead and turn this in. And if you want to zoom in around on it, you can go ahead and uh, roll the mouse. Again, this can be kind of helpful. One of the things I like to do with it is I like to leave traffic mode on. And of course, you can set it all as far as uh, the different options here. Motion vector is actually pretty fun to play with, but be careful. The other thing you can do too is uh, if you need to, you can put on your terrain. If I can do absolute terrain, you can see, uh, again, that nice little flight sim kind of a map there. You can do relative terrain. That's only relative to us. So like I said, I'm not stressing about that too, too much. Of course, you have all your airways, you have your lands, you can turn all those goofy things on here that you did here. Like I said, for this map, for me, in the real world, I would probably keep this one pretty minimum and use this one a little bit more detailed for those kind of options. Swinging down here in the bottom right is our PFD options. A couple things in here. Uh, the first one, of course, is AOA. Uh, if you don't want to look at it, shut it off. Uh, the other option, and this is a really popular option, if I click this button here, it will turn on our synthetic vision. 
Now, where I live in uh, my part of the country, because of the 5G towers, uh, they actually warn you not to use synthetic vision sometimes for approaches because of how dangerous and uh, kind of out of sync it's become. But as you can observe, uh, the mountain in front of us is actually quite tall, even though we can't actually see it right here. But that's where you can turn that on and off. You can turn your wind display. Remember, you already have a wind display down here, so it's not as important. And of course, if you need to, there's actually a meters overlay. So if you're flying like in uh, Russia or something like that, and they do everything in meters, you can actually just look over there and operate that directly rather than stressing about it. Our last stop on our little journey here, as far as this uh, avionics system goes, is this lovely guy over here for the purposes of dialing our frequencies. I already showed you a couple other ways to do it as far as just kind of clicking it. Uh, down here, you have a couple other things that you want to keep an eye out for. First one's going to be up here where you can go ahead and control your transponder. You can turn it on. You can put it on standby, for example. Um, for us in the U.S., at least where I fly, um, it's always on altitude reporting, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. You can also come down here and press the VFR, anything along those. Just make sure you press the enter key when you're done, otherwise it will not save. Up here on the top left, you can go ahead and ident. Uh, so if you're in VATSIM or something like that and they call you and ask for an ident, you can just bop that button real fast. And then, of course, you have your standard radios down here. So let's say, uh, for example, I wanted to go ahead and change my radio frequency. You know, I can do 121.700 or something like that. In my standby, if I want to swap, I could just click right away and swap. If I want to swap again, I can just click it again. And now, of course, will give me that frequency that we saw earlier. Now, where people get a little confused, and you kind of kind of watch out for this, is the fact that you have this mic and mon button down here. Now, for those of you familiar with the kind of generic audio panels, this is nothing new here. But the important thing to watch out for is uh, when you're monitoring channels, if you see one and two, it means you're listening to both. If you go to one, you're only listening to one. Now, some of you are like, well, what if I want to use radio two? Well, you have to come up here and set this to radio two in order to be able to monitor radio two. So um, what I like to do is I like to leave it on one, and usually I monitor both. Now, of course, my second frequency will be the a standard 1215, which is a pretty much the standard for um, what you would have on your monitor too, unless it's your ATIS. Now, of course, you're probably going, all right, I think I've got the hang of this. This is a really slick avionics set. I agree. This is fantastic. But uh, one thing you want to keep in mind too is, uh, what's this one do? This one is the one that will allow you to actually go in and dial in your other frequencies, such as your navigational quantum frequencies. If you don't select them off of here, you can press that button, come in here and actually turn it on. You'll also notice this little kind of gray line right here. If I click my mouse, uh, what you're actually doing is turning on the audio for it. So if I come in here, let's say I want to do a 1149, which is going to be Hartford. You can <laughs> Look at that. It already identified it pretty much right away. And now, of course, you can come all the way down here, and there's all sorts of fun things, like if you want to turn on your ADF. Uh, for people who uh, go back far enough, uh, let's see, zero, three, eight, eight. Ha-ha. Let's see if anybody remembers that one. So we can go all the way back. And, of course, uh, one of the fun things here is uh, you can turn the music on. There's also this clicks option. Um, it's one of those things where do you want to torture yourself? I mean, what's your goal here? Kind of a thing like that. And, again, you can come here and actually adjust the volume of that after you've clicked on that. I'm not worried about it too, too much as far as these things goes. But, like I said, there's kind of your options. You have your co-pilot page. won't do anything. Your passenger page won't do anything. And one of the aircraft that I fly now, we have a Bluetooth one of these. So what you can actually do is you can turn the radio on so your passengers can be listening to podcasts while you're doing all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of one of those sort of things that enables you to do it. And you get this fun little quarter. If you ever get stuck, always mash the home button. Now, one thing I want to show before we kind of head out here is if you come down here, you'll notice you can switch between MFD and NAVCOM mode. You'll also notice you can switch between your different modes here. Uh, just be careful with that. Uh, like I'm saying, just, just, just be mindful. Be mindful because uh, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to do something like this and you're going to like forget where your buttons are or you're not going to be able to get back to the page that you want in a hurry. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world or anything. It's just kind of one of those things that you want to just kind of be mindful of when you're operating it. But other than that, this is a fantastic little system. It uh, works really, really well. And like I said, hopefully uh, this gives you enough that you can be able to kind of play around with it without uh, being too, too concerned with the operation of it. Enjoy.